Day 81, 18th of August. Our ferry trip last night was awesome. It's the newest ship in the fleet and it outshone the, the Princess Cruise in so many ways. We had dinner and breakfast with a Nufi family on board who are now living just outside of Toronto, as so many of them are. And just before bed, we had a nightcap of screech and dry to toast Newfoundland. It was very emotional departing. We were fogged in during the crossing, so occasionally during the night we would hear a distant, mournful foghorn that seemed to just blend in with sleeping on the boat. A very comfortable sleep, followed by a long, hot shower. Such luxury. Up to the cafe for a coffee, to go over the changes we have already made to our planned trip of Nova Scotia. More like suggestions, really. We know how this travel thing rolls now. Then to the restaurant for a buffet breakfast with Rod, Angela, Jeremy, Ridley and Finn. Then we dock and catch a taxi to Avis, a V-Dub Golf. This is going to be just a little different from the V10 RV camper, but it is a zippy little car. We had to drop the back seats down so we could fit all of Larry's luggage into it. Oh, correction, Joss's shopping bags apparently. And it has an excellent air conditioner, which was very much appreciated as the day hit 31 degrees. And this is the inlet from North Sydney Harbour, Nova Scotia. We followed the western side of Bradio Lake down to the bottom of Cape Breton Island, then turned north and headed up the western side of the island toward Inverness. The logic to our madness was so we could travel the Cabot Trail clockwise, apparently the only correct way to do it. We also got to see the spectacular lake. Hmm, the road only touched it a couple of times, and most of the trip south was just trees. Heading up the west coast, we find we cannot actually get to a beach. What? And we've just stopped for lunch. Looks like somebody's private property on a beach. Still a few miles south of Inverness. And we sit down there and we can see what looks like a big fish of some kind dead on the beach. We're going to have to investigate it. come up closer to this beastie now. I was downwind from it before. Ho 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 ho. Couldn't stand to be there. It's got flies crawling all over it. Looks like it's got oh, all its skin disappearing. Big teeth. Oh, don't know what dealt to that thing, but uh, there it is. It's dead. We're on the Port Hood Wharf. Finally we found a small beach and the locals confirmed that there is only a couple of places you can actually get to the beach. Starting to get a little grumpy about this island when we turn a corner and come upon the village of Mabu, quaint green farming community with a touch of colonial in the houses. Very lovely. So we stopped for a pot of tea at the Mole Cafe. We have to do this now that we no longer have Cafe RV. The next stop is the beach at Inverness, the famous bottle glass beach, and the water is warm, so I find out as I search for tumbled bits of glass and crockery. I was a happy girl finding some treasures with Larry's help. No big surf here, so it makes it a bit easier. I can feel a swim coming on tomorrow, especially if it's as hot as it is today. Quite a crowd on the beach. It's a very hot day, 30 degrees. But it is time to find our B&B &B for the night, off the beaten track on a farm. We have a beautifully laid out two bedroom cottage to ourselves. It's still very warm so we leave the windows and doors open and go to sleep listening to the occasional mooing of the cows.